So we are down to four here at Bellagio. And prize money substantially starts increasing now. The next guy out is going to get over 450,000. Action is going to be on Hassan. Looks down on a pair of fives. Got the wired pair here. The speed limit. He limps in, as we say. Hassan calls 60,000. Behind him, Martin, an A7. With the button in front of him. He's in position. He's going to call. Just call. Doesn't go up here. Now Richard with a nice hand, the small blind, king jack of spade. He's also going to call. What's going on with these guys? Now we're back around to Matt. And Matt with queen six offsuit. Well, he's in the big blind here. He checks. So here we go, folks. 100% of the players in this pot. Four-way action. This is like a home game. Here comes a flop. Eight, five, four, a bingo for Hassan. He's oh, flopped three man. fives here. He said it. Visions of sugar plums going off in his head. Now Richard checks. Matt with a gut shot straight draw. He also checks. Hassan betting away finally. Yeah, he bets 100,000 here. Now Martin also with an eight high straight draw. He opts to call here. Richard throwing away his king jack. And Matt folds. Two rivals going at it once again. Hassan's got his man where he wants him. He's flopped the set. Here's the turn. Well, a queen comes off. Now, Hassan with three fives here. He's going for his chips. Not going to give his opponent a free chance to beat him here on this gut shot straight draw. Martin lays his hand oh, down. And he's going to take it down. And that's why you limp in with small pairs in hopes to flop a set where they might win a nice pot. Hassan did so there, picks up the pot. My name is Hassan Habib. I live in Los Angeles and I play poker. When I was in college, I just wanted to be a businessman. Plans changed, I guess. And I started playing poker. At first it was tough, but it's the toughest way to make an easy living. You know, Hassan has been in great shape every day this week. This is a five-day event, and at the end of every day events, he's been like in the top three in chip position, so he has never really been pressured or short-stacked, as we say, in this tournament. We are down to four. Big money out there, and let me tell you something, there's a lot of sweaty palms out there as well. <laughs> Stay tuned. that I was 10th or 11th place in a poker tournament. And it wasn't as well as I'm doing now. So when I woke up in the morning, that was a pretty good feeling to know that I was doing better than I could even dream about. <laughs> Literally. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour Championship at Bellagio. On poker's biggest stage, amateur actor Steve Brecker went all in on the second hand of the game. Good morning. And was the first to bow out. So that's going to do it for Steve Brecker. Attorney Russell Rosenblum thought he had a case with an ace queen. 600. But got sentenced to fifth place. No, he doesn't do it. Swedish sports better Martin Dicknave still maintains the chip lead, but with two rising stars and a poker pro still in the hunt, all think they have what it takes to be crowned the king of poker. Right now, Vance, these four remaining players are going to have a great payday. Just a matter of how much they're going to win. The fourth place finisher gets over 450,000. The third place guy over 700,000. The runner up gets 1.4 million and our winner gets over 2.7 million. A lot at stake. Here we go. Our chip leader now, Martin Dicknaif, looks at four deuce. Goes out. Here's Richard on the button, up against the blinds, has a nice hand, king, queen. Off suit. 180. He's going to raise it, make it 180,000. Does what he's supposed to do with that hand. Right into our Yale grad, Matt Matros, who's got a real hand. He's got a wide pair of sixes here. Let's see how he plays him. He's been a little quiet lately. He's finally got a wired pair. He's just going to call. Wants to proceed cautiously here, see a flop first. Hassan with 7 6. Off suit. Now, does Hassan want to get involved with the 7-6? He lays it down. So we got a pop between the two young guns. 
Richard Grahova, the 22-year-old student with the King Queen. Matt Matros, the 26-year-old with the two sixes. Here's our flop. Flop is Queen Jack Deuce, all spades. And the sixes have dried up there for Matt. Well, he has an under pair, but he also has a flush draw himself fence. He checks. Richard's hit his pair of queens, and he's got the king of spade. Nice place to be. 200. And here comes Richard. He's going to bet this hand. He bets 200,000. Not going to play it slow. And now Matt faced with a decision here. He has a pair. He has a flush draw. These are the kind of hands that can get players in trouble if they're not careful. Well, you can't think he'd really consider this, and he doesn't. Well, he lays it down. He could have considered it, but he wisely did not, and Richard picks up the pot. Not that time, Ricky, not that time. I tell you, if he calls that hand... He might have had you, but I don't think he so. To get his head examined. I mean, that would be one of the loosest calls we've seen on the World Poker Tour. He knows that. Wisely throws his hand away against the Lionheart. Vince, you can't help but wonder what these two guys are thinking. They're 22 years old, 26 years old. They're vying for a $2.7 million first prize. At worst, they're going to take home over $450,000. Oh, it's very impressive. So here we go again. It's going to be on Richard. He lays down a three deuce. And Matt lays his hand down. Now it's on Hassan. Uh, Hassan's got an 8-4 offsuit, and he's deciding he's going to splash around with him. Wants to try to see a cheap flop here. And Martin checks it with an equally horrible hand, 10 deuce. So here comes the flop. Flop is ace, ace, 10 with two diamonds. Hassan checks. 125. And Martin's got a piece of that. He's hit his 10s. Yeah, he's got two 10s, so he's going to bet. He bets 125,000. Now, Vince, what can Hassan be thinking about? He's got an eight and a four here. He can only be thinking about making a play on this pot. Well, he's not buying this, it seems like. He's saying, wait, if this guy really had an ace or even a 10, would he be betting at this point? Is there some trickery going on? He knows he didn't raise it before the flop, so I don't think Hassan can put him on an ace here. Look at this, Vince. Hassan just calls the 100,000 with an 8 and a 4. He's going to give action. Now, We've seen the play before. Well, what this means to me is he's going to try to take this pot away later on. And the three comes up. Hassan's going to look back at his hand here. Now, I can't imagine why he would call on the flop if he wasn't going to bet now. But he doesn't do it. He checks. 225. This is peculiar. And Martin quickly leads out and bets 225,000. And Hassan folds his hand. A very strange play by Hassan right there. Oh, you're right. I think he gave up on his strategy right in the middle there. Vince, let's go back and take a look at that last hand. 125. He called on the flop with the original intent, I'm sure, of betting out on 4th or 5th Street there. But he changed his mind, Vince. He decided, well, maybe Martin had a hand. He didn't want to fool with the chip leader. He ended up checking on 4th Street. 225. And then jettisoned his hand. He just had bad vibes all of a sudden. Well, he's got one tough customer on his left, Martin Dick Neef. The knife. Just cutting up his opponents here. Got to be wary. Right now it's on our Yale grad, Matt Matros. He's going out. Here's Hassan Abib on the button with Queen Jack of Clubs, a pretty good hand against the blinds, but he opts to just call here with it. With the button in front of him, that means he's in the best position in Hold'em poker. And look at this. Martin has picked up Ace King. Oh, he's got big slick. In the small blind. Now he's going to torture his rival once again here. He's reaching for some chips, some raisin chips. I'll make it 350. And a healthy raise, Vance, up to 350,000. Oh, he's going to put him through the pain factory. Richard going out with 8-4. And look at Hassan quickly jettison his hand. Doesn't even consider calling with the Queen Jack of Clubs. No, he's saying, leave me alone. I've been cut up enough tonight by the knife. Let me breathe a little bit. Well, Vance, it was a tough tournament for everyone trying to get here tonight. And in case you're wondering how this season's WPT champions fared, here's Shauna Hyatt to fill us in. Everyone wants to win their way into the biggest poker game in history. But there are only six seats at the final table. And that means even some of the best were left behind. 
343 of the greatest players in poker began a five-day betting fest at Bellagio, all hoping to be the one to win the $2.7 million first place prize. Some played it cool, while others couldn't contain their excitement. Yes! yes. Merry Christmas! Happy New Year! At the end of day one, Noli Francisco was the only WPT champion to be knocked out. But after day two, 161 more players hit the canvas, including WPT Player of the Year Eric Lindgren, Bill Locke, Foxwoods champ Cowboy Corkins, and Paul Phillips. On day three, three-time winner Gus Hansen KO'd with his ace-king. Then it was Mel Judah, Bill Gordon, Antonio Esfandiari, and Barry Greenstein. Reno winner Michael Kenny was the only WPT champion to make it to day four, but ended up settling for an 11th place finish. So for the heavyweights that made the final table, they battled with the best and won, giving them bragging rights for a lifetime and the chance to win millions. Let's get back to the action. Richard has the button. First action is up to Martin. Back to Martin. This time he looks down at Queen Six off suit and folds. Richard Grijalva. 180. He's in position on the button, makes it 180,000 to go with King 10. Yes, he does. Matt quickly going out with Queen Three. Oh, and look at this. Hassan has finally picked up the hand he's looking for. Two kings. Oh. This is what you dream about, folks. Oh, it's happy days are here again. Look at that. There is. And he's going to raise him back. Right back in your face. Right. He raises it 300,000 more. And he has his man Richard in a terrible position here. He is in a bind here. Will he make this call? And he's going to call advance. Ooh, instincts off a little bit there. He's yep. going to give action to the man. Well, he's going to try to catch something on the flop to beat these two kings. Oh, he's going to need a lot of something. Here's our flop. Flop is 9-3 deuce. That's not going to help him. So it's up to Hassan. He's going to lead out and bet. No free cards here. He bets 350,000. He quickly bets it. All in. Oh, no. Richard has gone all in with King 10. I call him. Hassan quickly calls him. Oh, this could be the mistake of a lifetime here for the young kid. He is taking a shot. A couple cards to come. Right now, Hassan so excited, way out in front of this. An absolute mess for Richard. Well, he's got to dodge a heart or a jack or a queen on 4th Street. Here's the turn. Well, it's a deuce. It's over now. It's irrelevant, the last card. Hassan Abib is going to win over a $4 million pot here. But, folks, before you chastise Richard too much and call him a complete idiot for moving in there with nothing, recognize the fact that for his opponent to call him there, he literally has to have a big over pair, a pair bigger than nines to make that call there. Oh. It turns out Hassan did, but had Hassan oh, had ace-king or ace-queen or something, he would have thrown the hand away, and then Richard would have looked like a genius. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you're right, Mike. He made the right move at the wrong time. And that time he has to pay for it. He has just doubled up Hassan. And a major pot it was, over $4 million in that pot putting Hassan right in the thick of things now. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more from the World Poker Tour Championship in Las Vegas. I had a full boat, and he had four nines. So I got beat out by Quad, by Hong Lee. You know, I, I couldn't have gone out in a better blaze of glory. <laughs> Las Vegas, Nevada. We are at the Bellagio for the World Poker Tour Championship, and we are down to four players. And right now, Martin Digne from Sweden is still our chip leader with seven and a half million dollars in chips. The antes and blinds have gone up. We're talking about a ten thousand dollar ante with fifteen hundred for the blinds. Action is on, Richard. 
Looks at an eight, deuce off suit and folds. Around to Matt, and look at this, he's got a wired pair of nines. Good starting hand. Very nice. 300. He is going to raise it, makes it 300,000 to go. So he 